What do volatiles dream about during the day? Mm. Hey hey hey! I'm the Global Cherry and I'll be talking about an important Dying Light 2 update explaining what to expect in the upcoming months. Before I begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Dying Light 2's first story DLC is delayed to September because they need more time to develop this DLC. Our expectations for this story DLC are now very high, so Techland, we're relying on you to create the most badass DLC story for Dying Light 2. Many people really wanted this DLC to relate to Elysium, but Techland probably has something else under their sleeve. Oh, and see this roadmap they posted? Erase it out of your memory because they made a new roadmap on what to expect from this month up to November. We're already getting our boost events including the blue moon event ending on May 16th. Until then, we can traverse the night with prolonged immunity. If you already maxed out your immunity, you will never have to use an immunity booster ever again. This is the perfect time to go banshee and volatile hunting. Why run from them when they can run from us? Also in one week, we can catapult our enemies into space so be ready for that! Teclan also made a special announcement that we'll be introduced to the first game chapter of In the Footsteps of a Night Runner in June. This game chapter could be additional story content divided into different parts and chapters. I'm hoping that it'll be much more substantial rather than a bunch of short quests like the Special Goon missions. As much as I loved hunting Special Goon variants, it wasn't getting me to come back for more of this game. Who are you willing to bet money on? The bandits or this electric goon? I'm betting the goon will beat them. Oh, look at them run. Hopefully the first chapter could cover something interesting like the downfall of the Nightrunners at the VNC Tower. What was that traumatic event really like from the perspective of a Nightrunner? It would also be interesting to see what Frank was like before drinking himself into a stupor. He was the leader of the Nightrunners after all. What happened to such a legend? You were a legend! Fucking commander of the Nightrunners! Do you even remember that? That Frank is dead, Luan. He died with the others at the TV station. When Aiden was forced to get Luan new shoes from her apartment, he came across a photo of a happy Frank and Luan. What changed? For a group of people equipped and trained for risky situations such as clearing out dark zones, how did many of them lose their lives at this tower? <laughs> Even Hakon said going there was a suicide mission, but he regrets not being there for his Nightrunner comrades. I would have loved to see this as a mini story, but the chapter might not be about that. It could just be about us patrolling the city as a random Nightrunner and helping out survivors. Regardless, I'm happy to show you this chapter. From June to August, we'll be getting new content, events, and a highly anticipated photo mode, which means we'll have more OP thumbnails on the channel! We'll also be getting an agent and rank system which could possibly be about legend levels like the first game. The community's wish came true! We will also have many bounties and missions potentially involving the PK, survivors, and renegades for that sweet loot. Techland, if you can add more variety of awesome weapons, that'll be great. Give the players weapons to fight for, not the basic blue ones. In their Diesel Punk trailer in the beginning of May, they showcased a variety of cool weapons in Dying Light 1, such as the Punk Dibere, a chainsaw called the Gut Render, and a melee weapon called the Flesh Ripper. If Dying Light 2 can have unique weapons like these, players will have more fun. New Game Plus and Photo Mode are great, but do you know what would make the game even better? Crossplay or cross-gen? It would be fun playing with our pilgrim friends across all platforms, and Timon is currently looking into it, but for now it's not going to happen. But as players, we can dream. From September to November, not only will we be getting the first story DLC, we will be getting the second chapter of Into the Steps of the Night Runner. As for the second story DLC, it will be released in the future. This second story DLC could be a huge expansion, like Dying like the following. We will also be getting newer weapons, enemies, stories, events, and free and paid DLCs as time passes. The new features and chapters are free, but the DLCs are not. Maybe we'll get more menacing enemies, preferably those who don't sound like they need cough drops. On to more important matters, let's talk about bugs. When the biggest patch 1.3.0 was released, people had many complaints about the bugs. People were falling under the map infinitely, 
come to kill me, have you? I have been falling for 30 minutes! They were stuck in the prologue. They couldn't even rest in safe zones due to frozen daytime. Unacceptable. I haven't faced these issues except Aiden appearing strangely dark on my screen when checking inventory. RDC had that problem as well, but I'm not sure if that's a bug. Many of the community's complaints were addressed by the hotfix update 1.3.1 for PC and PlayStation. Xbox, you aren't forgotten. Players are no longer stuck in the prologue. They can rest in safe zones without being frozen during the day, and connectivity issues have been fixed. People couldn't do co-op with their friends before, but after this update you should be able to. Techland also released exciting events for Dying Light 1. They had a Tolga and Fatin event where we got the blueprint for a gun called Pocket 7. With this special gun, we will hunt down big bounties, obtain king mods, swing into the fight as Super Crane, and restock ammo in save zones. What's taking you so long? Who wouldn't want to help our dear friends Tolga and Fatin? Ugly and stupid, what else does he have? <laughs> hey! How does he live like that? After creepily stalking our Dying Light uncle, Timon Smectella on Twitter, I discovered from one of his tweets of a potential survivor mode in Update 1.4. Teclan did not have much experience with the genre, but they have the design for it ready. Who knows? In survivor mode, Aiden could face the challenges of not only surviving the infected, but surviving by searching for food and water. This could involve hunting for animals. For a game about staying human, Aiden is definitely not on the human side. Crane at least survived on Halva bars, but I haven't seen Aiden eat anything at all. Maybe drink a couple of times? The Halva bars must have not made it to Villador. <laughs> With this survivor mode, Aiden will halve a way of dealing with this hunger. Get it? Ah, bad joke. Uh, uh okay, the exit is that way. Got it. <sighs> that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and comment your opinion on Dying Light 2's new roadmap. What do you think about the upcoming game chapter about the Night Runners? I'm really curious about this since this was unexpected content. In addition to this, Teclan said they fixed the bugs through the hotfix update. Let me know in the comments too if these issues are fixed or if you are still facing problems with the game. Thank you for watching, and that's all.